Is the person that works for you a 1099 contractor or an employee? This is probably the number one, if not top five, most asked question I have received in my career. Hey taxpayers, it's Tiffany Gonzalez CPA here and I want to talk to you about this really important distinction between a 1099 contractor and an employee because the difference between the two, the misclassification of such can lead to some severe penalties and issues down the road. A 1099 contractor, also known as an independent contractor, is referred to as such because they receive a 1099 NEC form at the end of the year for payments made in excess of $600 or more. They provide a business with services using their own tools, usually on a project by project basis and making their own schedule, usually working with many other business owners. 1099 contractors have specific characteristics. The first is independence. They can choose when, how, and where they do their work. Multiple clients, they might work with you, but they also might work with the business down the road. Now being a 1099 contractor also means that you don't receive benefits from the companies that you work from. You don't get to participate in health insurance. You can't participate in the 401k and you're also responsible fully for your taxes, including self-employment taxes like FICA, Social Security, and Medicare. When a business has a 1099 contractor, they only pay what's been invoiced to them and nothing additional. Let's compare this to an employee and the characteristics of being an employee. Usually, as an employee, your employer has a lot more control of when, how, and where you work. The employer has the right to not only dictate what is being worked on, how it's being worked on, but also when it's being worked on. Usually, the employee only has one employer. When it comes to taxes, the employer is responsible for withholding such taxes from the employee and also paying in addition to what the employee is paying, as well as likely providing some benefits, though most benefits are not required. Speaking of benefits more because it is a hot topic, under a certain threshold of employees, depending on your state, you're not required to offer employees health insurance or retirement benefits, though it could be lucrative to do so because it increases the potential chance of retaining and attracting top talent. So what happens if you get it wrong? Well, the IRS comes a knocking. You see, misclassifying employees as a 1099 is one of the biggest issues we face in small business. Most business owners don't want to deal with the complexity of having employees or the related contractual obligations. They also don't want to have to worry about workers comp or additional employer taxes. And so many times small businesses start off by only having 1099 contractors. And in the beginning, when you start a business, they may very well be 1099 contractors because you don't have enough work for them per se. But as your business grows, you want to start thinking about whether you're correctly classifying your employees in order to avoid issues in the future. The most important thing and place to start is understanding the law. And this video gives you some basis of that, but the IRS actually has a comprehensive list on their website describing behavioral control, financial control, and all of the key characteristics between the two. In addition to evaluating the levels of control you have with your worker, you also want to consider the use of contracts. If they are indeed a 1099 worker, perhaps you have an engagement letter or some sort of agreement written. You have invoices to back up that they are a contractor. You really want to make sure that whichever classification is chosen, you have followed the rules and documented as such. I think one of the biggest issues I've seen throughout my tenure is that when a worker misunderstands how they are classified and becomes disgruntled with an employer, that is really where things start to unravel. I want to end this video by giving you some examples of where there is a clear distinction of a 1099 contractor relationship. For example, if you hire a plumber because you have a leak in the bathroom, that plumber is going to work with multiple clients. He's not your full-time plumber. You don't support 
his full paycheck. He brings his own tools to the job and does the work accordingly. He also shows up whenever he can based on his schedule. That is a clear contractor relationship. And this is the type of analysis you want to go through when you're looking to see whether or not you have a contractor or an employee. But while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at Accounting to Scale, your favorite CPA, Tiffany Gonzalez.